It was in the Dominican Republic that Jonathan Ram first became exposed to coffee cultivation. My wife and I were living down in the Dominican Republic and we were working for a school and the school is connected with the coffee farm. The school director's husband owns and runs the coffee farm. Since the farm was also a learning site for the students, the Rams spent a lot of time there. They also spent a lot of time on porches, drinking coffee with friends, a cultural pastime in the country. We're looking to move back to Tyler just to be around my family and just thought we wanted to do something to stay connected with the school and coffee seemed like a good fit. So after learning the roasting side of the coffee business, Porch Culture Coffee was born. So right now you're offering five different choices. Yes. The bulk of the company's coffee beans come from the same Dominican Republic farm that first piqued Ram's interest. The coffee is organically grown without chemical fertilizers and pesticides, which is important because the streams that are on the coffee farm feed people's drinking water. Ram says the fact that the farm produces quality coffee beans is an added plus. It does well at multiple roast levels. We get a nice light roast out of it and we also um, get our nice dark and espresso. Ram has recently added coffee beans from Ethiopia to his selection, but he says he prefers to grow his coffee business slowly. What faster growth would mean to his special touch of delivering coffee straight to your doorstep by bicycle, only time will tell. I deliver by bicycle. I love delivering through the neighborhood, hanging coffee on people's doors, um, giving them a product that I, I believe is quality. From the Dominican Republic into East Texas coffee cups, the world's favorite drink now has a new purveyor. Until next time, from Tyler, I'm Joan Hallmark. And they, they stood there. I mean, they didn't even, they didn't even make a attempt. They left him, his arms were still hanging out of the house for 45 minutes. James Riggins tried to save his brother Calvin's life. I kicked the front door in and ran and went to run in the fire and blow me back. When that didn't work, he tried a window. I tried to get him out of the house and and they still got a piece of his flesh on my hands where I tried to get him out of the window. I couldn't get him out. James says around 630, kids inside the home started yelling that the house was on fire. About five kids and three adults were able to make it out before the fire department arrived. James says that fire department didn't do enough. And they stood there. They stood and they were spraying the back part of the house and not even spraying the front part where his arms are still hanging out the window. And they just let him burn. I hate them, dude. I hate them. I ain't got nothing for them. James says it took fire crews 20 minutes to get to the scene. The fire department says they were there in three. When the call came in at 6.45, I mean, our first unit was on scene at 6.48. How much time transpired prior to them calling 911, that I can't tell you. They can tell us that the fire started in the front room, that it was intense and moved fast, quickly taking everything this Kilgore family had. Right, what do I got left? I ain't got nothing else to lose. I done lost my brother, I done lost my house. I mean. In Kilgore, Melanie Torrey, KLTV 7 News. I did art all of my life, and um, I, I decided when I was in junior high that I wanted to go to school and do something in art. Although Mandy Jones was told she had never make a living in art and should really prepare for a nine to five job, she pursued her dream with studies at Tyler Junior College and graduated with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from the University of Texas at Tyler. When I went to college, I was taught, you know, draw out your emotion. You know, don't, don't let that build up inside of you, just draw it out. There's been a lot of emotion to express since Mandy has lived with epilepsy all her life. I have partial paralysis with my right foot and my right hand, but my parents always taught me that it was, it was no big deal, you know, I mean, I just kept, I kept going with it. While Mandy has kept going, she does admit to some difficulties because of her epilepsy. For example, she can't drive, so getting her paintings to art shows and other venues is an extra challenge. All I do are ride buses and take taxis and, you know, so that's how I get around. And I try to get around without asking uh, 
family and friends for that. I just, if I can't do it, then I just don't do it at the time. What Mandy does do is teach others to express themselves in art in her studio. She's found art especially helpful as a therapy for people with challenges, as well as a stress reliever for everyone. I just think that art is uh, really helpful, you know, with stress relievers and for anybody. I mean, it doesn't have to be somebody that has uh, a sort of challenge, but people uh, have a lot of mental anxiety that just builds up in them. So this really expresses your struggle with epilepsy. This is Mandy is writing a book about her life with epilepsy. Mainly I start with how uh, I was born with epilepsy, how I grew up with it. Um, people in my life that have always affected me in ways. While writing her book is still in progress, she's already painted the book's cover. I want this to be called The Elevator Chase. Although much of Mandy's painting is with charcoal and on the dark side, similar to her favorite painting, The Scream by Edward Munch, her lily painting for next year's Easter seals is inspirational. I just recently got picked for the Easter seals uh, to be on a stamp. I can do, you know, just about any uh, frame of artwork, but I just like the expressionistic uh, feeling the most. Mandy Jones calls her art studio Challenge House for art and more. She adds that whether we're facing a challenge or seeking a challenge, she can help. After all, she's had plenty of experience along that line. Until next time, from Smith County, I'm Joan Hallmark.